Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dungeon Boys. My name is Keith. I'm your DM. Josh, playing as Arnold. Zena's playing as Grim. And my name is Bryce, playing as Jack Law. And hey. we're still in the same location as last episode with air conditioning, and it feels pretty good. And you're listening to Galaxy News Radio. No, you're not. Coming oh, at know. you live. You're listening to Tank Media. You're listening to Dungeon Boys. Uh, last episode, you guys made it to the Round Isle. You're outside the gates of the city of Buckland. You've met a new dwarf, which we know the name of by accident because I told you. Nude. New. Checking. Uh, Just checking. He, he was refusing uh, to l- allow some orcs to enter into the city to presumably call some more folks, seemingly based on the premise that they had already been there and that they are not, a, they are not you know, uh, going with the agreed upon schedule. Uh, this forced them to attack, and so now the party is in locked in combat. They have killed four orcs, and there are two elementals, an earth We've and a fire four elemental. Of these story arcs already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> arcs. Uh, arcs. Um, but there's an earth elemental and a fire elemental. One has just swiped at Jack and so hurt him and caught real, him on real, fire. Just real quick, there, there's a place next to where I work. They're selling fireworks for Fourth of July. If you're listening to this any other time of the year, it's 4th of July. But their sign got blown around in the wind the other day. Mm-hmm. So on my way to work, it actually has a sign that says Fire Orcs. Fire Orcs. Just right. wanted to point that out. Write that down. <laughs> um, orcs with fireworks in them? or Hey, hey it could work. I'm just saying. It could work. They open their mouth. It's like a Roman candle. It's just like... <laughs> so the very last thing that happened was uh, Arlo Sappy. brought down a giant Pikachu lightning... <laughs> on the earth elemental as well as their new companion or their new you know, acquaintance the dwarf who we don't know the, the name dwarf of. on the wall who doesn't need warm clothes apparently this mysterious dwarf um he's got two cool axes and that'll do but i mean we never decided like what happened like i hit them but they took damage cool so they did take damage 13 damage nice from last time they took damage, and now it is Grim's turn. Boy, how far am I from the Stone Boy? Uh, stone Boy, you're 40. Well, thing moved to Jack. How far were you from Jack, if you remember? I mean, probably like 30 feet. We never decided that yeah. far. We'll say he's about 30. The whole 30. thing is really county. weird, because I moved up 30 to meet them, and they moved out 30 this way, and I was 45 feet away from them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of numbers that made sense a while ago. Um, at least in my brain, we'll say Just you're thirty feet. A number. We'll say yeah, we'll say you're thirty feet from Jack. Jack is like below you, the fire elemental. <coughs> Let's we'll say you're probably kind of in between these two now after the movement. So 30, 30 feet. So we'll say you're probably within Just 30, 45 feet from the Earth Elemental. Which is it? Thirty. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Right. I just you're, I, you're, yeah, the movements that, are specific. Yeah, if it's forty five, I can't reach him. Yeah, you're right. The the game necessitates that I tell you an exact one. My estimating brain is telling me to estimate. Shut off your damn yeah. government brain. <laughs> My government brain. Um, At the government, we don't deal in absolutes. <laughs> before we get too deep into this, uh, You're on going, fire. going prone, <laughs> yeah. Being prone, it takes half your movement speed to stand up, right? Correct, yeah. Would we say that I can drop to the ground without using any movement speed? Sure. Okay. <laughs> We're about to stop, drop, and roll. But then, when you stand yeah, there's back snow up, on the ground, so true, yeah. you're still gonna be in his space. I'm gonna move He's back half of my movement speed, then drop to the ground, then stand back up. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna run at the stone boy. Run at the stone boy. You you reach him. I'll reach. Uh, I'm gonna move my yeah. hammer up, but I don't, it's twenty feet. It, okay, so I don't know how far the stone and fire were from each other. The when they were stone the guy went, he was 30 feet away. The last time he moved, he was 30 feet away from the from the gate. He Just then, from the, was the fire guy at the gate? The fire guy was at the gate, so your hammer was at the gate when you smacked him. Okay, I remember so that. It's and not going to make him this turn. Correct, because the earth guy was 30 feet from that. Mm-hmm. Then he also moved up probably 15 feet to get to Duncan, to hit him. Okay. So... We'll say 45 feet for your hammer to travel to get there. Total. Okay. If it could move that far. That's how far it has to go. Okay. I'm going to run up at the stone boy, and I'm going to punch him real good times. Punch him. Twice. Twice times. Okay. And we said, do your fists count as magical weapons, or just the magic on your fists? Have we deal- dealt with this before? I guess just the magic on my fists. Okay. Gotcha. I'm going to cast Blight, then. 
I shouldn't. So I shouldn't have said what I said. Well, either way. Okay. It we'll doesn't let, matter. We'll do no, it we'll do 15 for a hit. For what? Blight? For, no. Uh, 15 for a hit from a fist and 23 okay. for a hit from a fist. 15 and 23. The first will be a miss. You don't crunch very hard with the first one, but the second one, you okay, get him. So he takes three damage. Okay. <laughs> three damage. I got you. All right. Earth Elemental takes three damage. He does not turn on the three damage, but he is he is he has noticed you. <laughs> he roars a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's just that um, is a little bit. Anything else? No. Nope. Because you move the thing with a bonus action. Cool, cool. Uh, Burb is still chilling in the bushes, cheering you on, Jack. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Go I'm ahead. going to wall on fire. Yeah. Make a swipe with. Do I take damage for being on fire and it starts my turn? Yes. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You will take some damage for being Jack's on fire. Jack's thinking about how much damage he wants to take from this fire. Your turn. Uh, you take four damage at the start of your turn. Okay. Um, then I'm going to swing my cleaver at the torso of the creature. Okay. No, never mind. That's I saw the arrows go through it. That wouldn't work. Reasonable, sure. I'm gonna cast booming blade on my cleaver. Okay. Making it magic and hit him with that. Okay. So booming blade would have the effect, or does that make your weapon a magical weapon? And it's just the effect of booming blade. But gotcha. would you say that I add my sneak attack damage to it? Oh. Um. Why would you have sneak no, attack? you wouldn't add sneak attack to it. No, well, technically he could because he's got advantage because of the spider. Actually, ah. just because he's by himself, I still have it. Oh, okay. Well, that's, but okay. sneak attack isn't magical. Okay. That does make sense to me that your sneak attack, you don't benefit. There's not a magical situation going on. It's just. It, it's kind of, but I picture it as kind of being more like a critical, like you hit him in a specific spot. But I guess booming blade doesn't affect a specific spot. It yep. affects the creature. Also, this particular creature is kind of like just an amalgamation of fire. He doesn't look to have like organs or you know like specific spots or anything. I wonder if it when it passes the microphone, does it just sound like? <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a fly flying around and what landed on the mic. Um, okay, so, so I'm just blade gonna, on the cleaver. Yeah. It missed him. What'd you hit? What'd you... Uh, he has a lower armor class than the other one. Still, it's... So I use my... Uh, intelligence for booming blade. Plus proficiency. Wouldn't I just do my cleaver? Is yeah. that my dex? Hmm. It's a melee attack roll, so melee spell attack roll, so you'd use your intelligence, which is the poopy. Okay, I haven't been doing that because I assumed I'd be hitting him since I'm hitting him with my cleaver. Well, you've got the spell in your thing. Look up that. Um, I'll just go with what you said for now. Uh, it's seven. Okay, so know that one. I have correct. Okay. I should trust you when you say that kind of thing, but I like to ask and get the numbers. Um, whenever you say it doesn't hit. Usually you're probably talking about like a four or five or whatever. So. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so anything else? Have you moved yet? You haven't moved yet. I have not you're still moved on fire. yet. So I'm going to take my bonus action to disengage. Okay. And I'm going to hop back 15 feet and roll through the snow a little bit. Okay. So yeah, we'll say that that uses up your movement speed. Does that, do I, does that use up my movement speed to stand back up? I'm happy to have you standing back up at the end of that. That's fine. Okay. So you disengage, roll back, roll through the snow one good time. The fire is off of you. You've got snow packed onto you at this point. You're feeling rather cold at this point, but it, it feels good for a Better second at least. <laughs> uh, and so is that the end of your turn? Yes, that's okay. it. Okay. The Earth Elemental now is going to try to smack Duncan again. He's going to reach back and try to smack Grim again and kind of like split the two of you with a pair of fists. At the same time? He has multi-attack. I know, but is he making both attacks oh, at the yeah. same time? Would you say that's a disadvantage thing because he's only got two eyes? I would not. <laughs> I think you're playing fast and hard with these rules. <laughs> I don't think so. It's an Elemental, so. You mean fast and loose? He's <laughs> <laughs> made a rock. Yeah. I you're, chose my words. You're, you're, you're playing fast and tight with these rules. <laughs> uh, all right, so 
on Duncan. Duncan is going to get hit. And he is going to roll a 16 against you, Grimly. That hits. All right. So I'm going to roll damage for each, for each of these individually, giving what looks to be a chance possibly to do less. So to do probably more than one. Oh, okay. That's three. Ooh, boy. Is Booming Blade really not on here either? Duncan is having a bad day, boys. Who? It wasn't. Don't. It wasn't. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> this unnamed <laughs> dwarf. <laughs> it wasn't like he was having it's a great day before one. we got yeah, here. Yeah, that's correct. He can't be having a worse day is what I'm saying. Right. I need to look at some of his, if he's got any special I mean, he's making some friends. He's getting <laughs> out there. I mean, you know, it's not, not a bad day. Was he getting his butt handed to him by a rock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. The hit on you, Grim, is going to deal, of course, you lucked out, 10 damage <laughs> instead of the very much more than that that Duncan took. So you being a bigger boy are able to you know, boy. to take some of the damage. Also, I should have mentioned that whenever you got back and you cast that spell, uh, you may have expected to be Tiny Grim, but the full rest actually allowed you your limbs to grow back. It was a very short thing. It wasn't a big deal. It's like um, one of those little foam things you put in a glass of water and it kind of expands. Yeah, we should have mentioned that. Um, but you take 10 damage from a rock smack. Cool. And Duncan... Not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, Duncan takes that hit, the, the dwarf, the blonde dwarf that you with the tattoos. Just call him Duncan, it's yeah. easier. He gets smacked again and he gets pressed farther into the ground and like you see blood running down his hands and like there's a little bit coming out of his nose. He looks like he might be concussed. He shouts... We've got to deal with this thing. It's going to kill me. <laughs> um, and that's what he shouts at this point. Uh, it is now Jackaroonie's turn. No, it's not. That's not I'm true at all. Say. It's his turn, actually. <clears throat> he is going to take his axes and try to bury them into the hands of the creature that just smacked him. Um, so. Oh, boy. My man, Duncan. He is uh, unable to break through the rock of this thing, uh, and he is going to take this opportunity to uh, get back to the gate. He's going to run back over there to the gate at this point and use 30 of his movement speed to get out of the range of this rock boy. I would like to take an attack of opportunity. <laughs> on, on the door? <laughs> <laughs> Indiscriminate fire at this point. Um, it's now the fire elemental's turn. He is going to um, seeing that Jack uh, disengaged from him and was did not seem to be as much of a threat as he once thought. He is going to turn around and head back towards the gate. So he's going to use some of his movement to get up to the gate at this point, and he is going to put hands on the gate, and the gate begins to get hot. And the gate begins to smoke. Um, and Duncan says, Hey! We've got to stop him from burning down the gate! It's something we need! <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? The dwarf. Okay, just <laughs> check in. Uh, it is now Arlo's turn. Okay. So he has moved to the gate. He is not all up in your business anymore. He is no Jack. longer in his business. Okay, cool. Um, I am. I am. I'm gonna change things up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cast watery sphere. Watery sphere. Okay. Yep. Last for a minute. Uh, range is 90 feet. Uh, conjure up a sphere of water 10 feet radius, and at a point you can see the sphere can hover. In the air, but no more than 10 feet off the ground. The sphere remains for spell's duration. Any creature in the sphere space must make a strength saving throw. On a successful save, the creature is ejected from the sphere to the nearest unoccupied space outside it. A huge or larger creature succeeds on the save throw automatically. On a failed save, a creature is restrained by the sphere and engulfed in the water. At the end of its turn, a restrained creature can repeat the saving throw. All right, so lar you said large creatures. Huge. Don't Huge or larger creature succeeds. Huge or larger. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, so, you got to make a strength check. All right. So the sphere is coming onto the creature. Right. So I'm just causing like this watery sphere to. 
How big is it? Ten feet wide. Ten feet wide. Does a ten foot radius. Ten foot radius. So it's a twenty foot sphere of water. Okay. The giant fire water. elemental's not big enough to resist it. Because if he was, we'd be fighting like. No, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not thinking about resistance. Yeah. I'm doing some math in my head. Okay, what do I do? Uh, strength saving throw. From the meme with the like the chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, strength saving throw. He does not succeed. I imagine if it's more than nine. There you go. So he is restrained. All right. So you pass the water down on top of him. It just How many like gallons. Would you say? Oh, like that he's boy? he's up there on the door. I guess it would just like start between him and the door and just like yeah. expand out. Very cool looking, yeah. by the way. Uh, as that happens, that steam is mini <laughs> erupting off of this creature. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping this accomplishes two things. It'll slow his little happy behind down, but also it will um, kind of help to extinguish 20 the 20 feet, a 20 foot diameter sphere. Hey, this is a level. No, four, I, no, baby. no. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's, I'm just saying that's a lot of gallons that is a of lot water. Of uh, how tall are large things? What's that? Feet? What's that measurement? Uh, they do not exceed 16 feet. They don't 16. exceed 16 feet. All right, so what happens whenever you use this water? So this thing is made of fire, mm -hmm. albeit magical fire, but it's made of fire. And one thing about a fire elemental that you're learning right now is that it has water susceptibility. <laughs> so as you create this water sphere and the steam starts to come out of the sphere and the water on the edge of it is boiling and bubbling as you see the light of this creature pushing out of it and its arms like are reaching out trying to pull as the water pulls it in but eventually it's all inside the water and the water bu bubbles and steams and and eventually the flame of the creature goes down 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 to the point you've damaged it enough to where the <laughs> gallons of water there's enough water in there to counteract the full fire elemental so it steams and then all that's left of the fire elemental goes up into the sky and now floating in what is a very much smaller batch of your water maybe like three feet across is all the water you have left and floating in that three foot diameter thing is the clothing of an of an orc mage it's just the robes very that are cool. in, that are that's floating inside that water so cool nicely done cool used water against the fire elemental hey impressive <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it is now Grim's turn. Hmm. Unless you want to move. Um, I'll move class. I'll move closer to where Jack is at. All right, hugging up on Jack, who's brushing the fire off of himself in the snow. Yeah. Grim, your turn with the Rock Boy. Uh, I'm going to cast Spirit Guardians as a fourth level spell. Cool, cool. That's the that's the the floaty around Orbeez. The floaty boys. Um, it's it is in action to cast. Uh, you call forth spirits to protect you. They flit around you to a distance of 15 feet for the duration. If you are good or neutral, uh, their spectral form appears angelic or fey. We'll just say angelic. Uh, you can designate creatures that you can see to be unaffected by it. So all the boys that I can see all that I don't want dead. <laughs> uh, an affected creature speed is halved in the area. When the creature enters the area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 3d8 radiant damage, but since I'm using a fourth level, it's going to be 4d8 radiant okay. damage. Okay, so it I don't make the save till my turn, or he doesn't make the save till his turn? Well, it's the same thing with sickening radiance. I don't know if we did the sickening radiance the right way, because I don't think it's like when it appears type thing. So Okay, so you, we did it when it appeared on the sickening radiance, so we should have just done it whenever they yeah, you just, started a turn you there. Yeah, you just make a rule. Okay, so it sounds like it says when it starts a turn, so we'll do it when they start their turn. That is what it says. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> your, your eyes say that's not preferable. No, that, no, that's not at all what I was Okay, gotcha. Thinking. All right, so uh, what else do you do? Your, your hammer is 30 feet away. No, my hammer's going to disappear. Because this is okay. a, yeah, my hammer Hammer has disappeared, so um, you now have floating boys around you. Yeah. That's all that I'm sounds do. weird, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> that is fellas. all I'm going to do. All right, so the Earth Elemental, seeing that the Fire Elemental is now <clears throat> kaput, he is also going to try to move to the gate. But he's going to make a save. But the first thing he's going to do before he does that is as you're casting your spell, he's going to reach down and try to give you another smack. So he's not going to make a save? He will make a save, excuse me. Yeah, and, and then I, do, I try cast to the give spell you this, on my turn. Correct, and try to give you the smack after that um 
What's kind of save? Wisdom. Wisdom. He not gonna do that. That's a nine. Ooh, yeah, he don't. Okay, boss. Uh, numbers. Twenty-two. Damage. Twenty-two damage. What kind? Radiant. Radiant damage. All right. Um. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and you said I'm sorry. The number again. Twenty-two. Two. Twenty-two. All right. And his speed is also halved, so it's going to yes. take him 30 feet to get out of this little area. And this kind of damage, radiant damage, so he's as he's he's entering into it, and I'm just like bright light is damaging him at this point, just radiating through. It's basically fire. Well, they also use radiant damage for like sunlight and stuff, okay. so it's, it's like holy fire. So it doesn't burn, it sears. Gotcha. It's like these, these orbs are like put shooting him with this essentially, or... Uh, I don't think the orbs do it. I just think that's like so you know the area. I think gotcha. he just as long as he's in this area, he's gotcha. being burned. Cool. Well, he is burning. Doesn't like it very much. He roars, and as he tries to lumber through there, after he does try to smack, we keep forgetting about that. He's going to try the smack. Um, he rolls a twelve to hit you at the smack. That meets my AC. All right, so we will give you the. We did. We decide it has to be over it. Yeah. Yeah. So that he does not do it. You're able to get out of the way as his fist slams into the ground. Um, the next thing he is going to do is try to run towards the gate, but he only makes it 15 feet. Cool. And I, whenever he only tried to smack you once, he didn't. He's not able to use his other attack. I tried to do an attack of opportunity, but I missed. Oh. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, it is now Jack's turn. Burb still says, "Only one left, friend." How far is the rock monster? <clears throat> From you at this point, I'm gonna call it sixty feet. Okay. Then I'm gonna cast hex on him as a bonus action. Hex? Yes. What is hex? For an hour, he has disadvantage on an ability check of my choice. I'm gonna go with strength. Cool. And he takes an extra d6 of necrotic damage for any time he is attacked. Cool. And if he drops to zero hit points while the hex is still in place, I can pass the hex on to the next person. Grim. <laughs> <laughs> the next closest. Nice. Absolutely. Cool, cool. The unnamed dwarf. All right. Are you going to move it all, or? I move. I'll move 30 feet closer. Okay. But that was just a bonus action, right? Yeah. What else are you going to do? Um, I need to see. Do I need to make like a roll for Hex, or is it immediately hit? Oh, I mean, I, maybe I have to roll something to, um, uh, to fight the Hex? Don't know. You can always use old Reliable. Um, the, uh, yeah. The creature you can see within on. range. Okay. Until the spell ends, you do uh, you just you just cast it. You place a curse on a creature that you can see within range. Sounds good to me. Deal an extra d6 necrotic damage to the target whenever you hit it with an attack. Sure. Sounds uh, good. Okay. So yeah, I do that. And then I'm going to move 30 feet closer, yep. and then I'm going to cast uh, Eldritch Blast. Oh, reliable. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to hit. That's also not going to hit. Double miss, so... You using your new powers, you're able to to you think that you can curse this creature in some way, so you lock on to that, and then you try to use your force blast from your warlock, your new powers that you don't fully understand, and they're they're unwieldy. They're unwieldy. They're not. They're they're hard to fire with. One of them slams into the gate, and like you hear it go, and one of them hits the wall, and like a little chunk of rock comes off. Not big. It, it kind of bounces off. Um. <clears throat> it is now <laughs> Duncan's turn? Misko's turn? Yeah, I think I gave the Earth Elemental a turn before Jack when I shouldn't have. Um, that's my bad. So we're going to skip him now. And it is now Duncan's turn. So Duncan is going to turn around and cut his losses and sprint towards this creature and jump up and try to whoosh, chop him in his belly with his two axes. Belly chop. 
I can kind of imagine, like, he's very proud of, like, his family name or whatever, so, like, he's got it, like, all over his, uh, all over, like, his back and everything. That's the tattoos that actually says, I'm Duncan. <laughs> Bruh. Duncan, he is just not, it's not happening this day. He jumps up, <laughs> and he's like, oh, crap, I'm a dwarf. And he doesn't quite get to where he wanted to go. He so his knee. He essentially, <laughs> he essentially goes sprinting towards him, runs through, and jumps between the creature's legs, and just comes out on the other side and, like, you know, hits a barrel roll, goes another, like, I guess 15 feet or so, and slides back with his, with his axes, like, I'm ready to do this. I've, I've done what I wanted to do. But um, look, so I'm crap. now in the opportune position. <laughs> he calls out, he says, Thank you so much for your help. Isn't he, like, right next to me? Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't do this on my own, obviously. Oh, it's no trouble. It seems like an off day. <laughs> Um, it is now Arlo's turn. You and me both, Duncan. Arlink. I want to do it. How, how far is Duncan away? We're 15 feet away. You're fine. 15 feet? It. Yeah. Okay. Just do it. I want to I want to <laughs> toss him a potion of healing. He catches it. Unnamed wolf. Oh, wait. We're not 15 feet from you. We're 15 feet from the thing. I thought you were going to call lightning the... Oh, yeah. He's I probably good. The, the lightning to do the water. Yeah. Um, We're probably a good, or Duncan and the dwarf <laughs> and Grim are probably a good thirty feet up, up from Ow, my body or south. south. <laughs> it's up, but south. Still, like, I'll I'll toss him a, a potion of healing. So a northwest southerly direction. Um, okay, that's two d four plus two. So you want to roll or you want me to roll? He nat twenty catches it. You nice. roll it. You can roll the healing. <laughs> that was a nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets eight. <laughs> He, he catches it, tosses the liquid into the air, then <laughs> sucks it out on the way down. No, he just he says, "Thank you, unnamed stranger," and he sucks down the juice. How much healing? That guy's Eight. name is Barry. Okay, not a problem, unnamed uh, dwarf dude. And um, thank you for covering the sins of the DM. <laughs> I do I do say that guy's name is Barry. Who? Oh. Uh, to Duncan, because oh. he says the unnamed. Ba- Ah, Barry. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and your right. name, sir? John. It's a very common name. Thank you, John. And Barry. Rather exotic, that Barry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanna, what do you do? I want to cast uh, Healing Spirit. Cool. What I can do as a bonus action. Cool, cool. Um, call forth a nature spirit. It's a level two. Uh, lasts up to a minute. Call forth a nature spirit to soothe the wounded. Nice. The intangible spirit appears in space as a five foot cube. You can see it in range. What is my range? 60 feet. Okay, we're good. Spirit looks like a transparent beast or fae. Your choice until the spell ends whenever you creature. You can see it moves into the spirit space for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there. You can cause spirit to restore 1d6 hit points to that creature. No action required. The spirit can't heal constructs or undead. As a bonus action on your turn, you can move spirit 30 feet to space you can see. Okay, so how much healing does he get and what's it look like? All right, so I'm, I'm, cast, I'm, I'm casting this spell. Um, it needs to look like a beast. I'm going to make it look like a, a squirrel. Okay. I'm going to make it look like this. <laughs> Call glow- back from the very beginning. <laughs> yep, this glowing, golden, like, spiritual squirrel. <laughs> okay. It does 1d6 healing, and I just want to, like, toss it at Jack. Okay, so Jack gets the healing. Gotcha. So I am throwing a glowing squirrel at you. <laughs> <laughs> A nice. squirrel of hell. <laughs> it has entered your space. Does it like fly or float or? Uh, it just does regular squirrel stuff. So I'm just gonna like, I'm it's just gonna spiritual. like throw it towards you. It's just gonna like latch on. Okay, cool. So cool. now a squirrel on me. Nice. You got a squirrel. And Do a I spider. take healing immediately or yep. on my turn? Yeah. Okay. You take a one d six. One d six. I got Very two friendly nice. creatures on me, so mm. I can get like. Double advantage. You're right? gonna get into a battle, start chasing all, all over you. No such thing, sadly, as double advantage. Um, How much healing? One d six. Come on. But it lasts for ten rounds. So. Nice. Alright, cool. Okay, and now it is Grim's turn. Ooh. I'm gonna move up to the man. Okay. Uh, let's see here. What what you mean? Wait, does uh, anybody uh, attack the uh, creature and hit it? Not, not since you have, cast Hex. Okay. Yeah, I, I hit it with a lightning earlier, but that was it. I'm, I'm going to cast it. a third level uh, Inflict Wounds. Okay. Now, we... 
I don't think Arlo has this issue, but Jack and I both use spells that are affected by melee things. Mm. So it says make a melee spell attack against a creature you can reach. And since Grimm's weapon or his fists, are we saying that I use my strength or I use my spellcasting modifier? And I guess you're the same, same goes for, for like Jack. You're trying, like you're essentially trying to like inflict wounds. Yeah. Well, that's yours says a melee spell attack. Mine says as a part of this spell, make a weapon attack. Yeah. But Grimm's hands are his weapons. Well, it makes sense that you would just punch normally, and I guess like Either you, way, you would use whatever you whatever you would use to connect with a punch. We'll use that. Okay. And then we'll of course do the stats of the spell. But you're including a punch with. No. No. Just rolling. Because he's using his hands, he's not like just. I guess close to all we would have would be like shillelagh or something. Either way, either way, it doesn't matter. I'm fine. We can have that later. I'm ready for. We're almost done with this combat. I feel like. Uh, a natural twenty. That's how all right, you feel. there you go. That hit. That's what you feel like. Yeah, I feel like we're getting close. Just a feeling. Uh, yeah, and I got I got lore I want to dump, boys. I need y'all to kill this guy. Sprinkle us with wisdom from your mighty brow. <laughs> uh, 42 damage. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a uh, third level inflict wounds. Is one D, it's 3d10 at first level, and it's an additional 1d10 every level after first. So it's 5d10. Okay. I remember All right. Good old there you go. Wounds. So you rolled pretty good in those. I did. I rolled like... A ten, two nines, and some other stuff. And so you, you so you, are you grabbing or punching? I'm just slapping. All right. So you put your hand on this creature, on its leg as it faces the gate, uh, and this purple magical cracks begin to form inside the creature, and it cracks all the way up his back, and you can see like this purple light shooting out the back of it and stuff. Plus the one d six from. And then hex. roll a d six of necrotic damage as well, um, Bryce, because oh, of the right. hex. Nothing. That's a five. All right, cool. Boy. So this creature, oh, it's not at the gate yet. It's somewhere in between, right? And so you run back to the back of it and grab it on its way, uh, and it, as the, the purple magic begins to uh, crumble pieces off of it, but it's not quite dead yet. It's still standing. Cool. It is now all I'm doing. Jock's turn. Oh, I'm take Jock. A, take another D6. Jacques Cousteau. Because it's whenever it enters your space or when you start your turn in its space. I got another three heal. All right, now how far am I from this thing? It moved, didn't it? Just 15 feet. Yeah, Just so 15 feet. it would have got, it's kind of like if you're down here, I think it's like moving this way. So maybe you're, but you moved toward it, didn't you? Or last time? Yeah. Um, so 30 feet away. Okay. So I think I said 60 last time. Um, 30 feet now? Yeah. Okay. For the sake of expediency. Okay, I'm going to move in, and I'm going to hit him with my knife with Blooming Blade on it. Okay. Critical fail. So I'm going to use <laughs> my dodge for my bonus action and move back. You don't want to use a luck point? Huh? I've already used one. Uh, yeah, I'll go for it. Okay. That's a 17. Uh, based on our rule that you have to beat it, it you you met it, so it's still not enough to hit. I thought you said it went to the player. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but it's this That's is a AC, different kind though. of tie. We deal with this every time I mention it. Yeah. The, the That's because we changed it all of a sudden in the middle. Well, so because we, I think we we learned some new information, or we decided to learn some new information. Armor class is, you know, if you meet it, you're we're still saying if my armor class is 15, you hit me with a 15, I'm prepared to deal with up to 15. Okay. And so, unless you get 16 or more, you don't hit me. A tie on any other kind of check goes to the player. So, like, if you try to, if you roll a 15 strength I, check and I roll a 15 strength check, the tie I goes to you. Move back. Okay, cool. So that's our that's our of course house rules on that. That's not written. I don't know if that's written down or not. <clears throat> and I wasn't saying angrily that we deal with it every time. It's just more of a thing that I've noticed that it's one of those rules that I struggle to lock in as well. So, sadly enough, your, your knife with booming blade does kind of chink off the rocks. I guess RP-wise, it makes a little bit of sense that the knife you know, kind of chinks off the, the rocks of this creature. It didn't hit at all, because then booming blade would be active. Ah, so it I didn't hit it. at all. His leg passing by, you, you whiffed, 
you are conflicted about these new powers. You are struggling to wield yourself. That'll work. Um, it is now his turn, and he is... Wisdom save. Wisdom saving, correct. He fails that one big time. Another failed wisdom <coughs> save. This may be enough to do it, folks. 14. It is enough to do it. Uh, radiant damage, so it, we'll say that as he was, you know, coursing with this purple magic that was chunking pieces off of him, it, it was revealing, like, the inner magics that were keeping him standing, and then as it did that, the, the radiant guardians, the spirit guardians, the light goes on him, and he takes all this damage, and then as he's stepping forward, the it's uh, kind of like you, I don't know, what movie it, you would, it would have been in, but I've seen rock things fall apart this way as it steps forward. Just It steps and then cr- crumbles forward. And all that you can see that's left as those rocks go away and kind of fizzle into the dirt are the robes of a of an orc mage. Mm, nice. And you're complete. And Duncan says, Victory! Thank you so much. Who's Duncan? This dwarf that you just met. <laughs> he says, My new friends... Thank you for your help. My name's Duncan. Nice to meet you. <laughs> My name is Duncan. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I can you see like Duncan. these tattoos, like where he's got his arms crossed. It's like done. Can yeah. <laughs> I go? I deactivate the spirit guardians and I shake his hand. Okay. I have a feeling your name might be Duncan, yeah. considering you were shouting it the whole time. Yeah. When he's <laughs> when he's he slaps your hand and his give him nine points of healing. Nice. He appreciates <clears throat> that. Um, oh. So you heal him up and he Oh, thank you, kind stranger You're welcome I appreciate your help, you had no reason to help us But it seems as though you jumped right in I certainly appreciate it Like I said, my name's Duncan My name's Grim, it's a pleasure to meet you It's a pleasure to meet you I've got to all reveal to you that you have the pleasure Of meeting the newly elected mayor of Buckland oh, It's I cool. Mayor Duncan I don't mean to be rude, but it's rather cold out here. Could we possibly go inside and find something warm to get into? Absolutely. Yeah, Arlo is blue. Absolutely. But before I let you in, I have to, I have to ask you, what brings you to our, to our island? To what brings you to the Round Isle? What brings you to, to Buckland? I don't even remember. <laughs> we, 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 we was just returning our friend uh, home. Uh, this, this, uh, this is our friend, Macy Go. Come on. Yeah. Our, our friend Jack received a letter from his parents. Oh, yes. A letter? What? What? what, what do you not mind me asking what did it say? Hi. Hello. <laughs> That's all? We are your parents. <laughs> It's been no. like a couple months since we read that letter. Like, like oh, yeah, out of sorry. game. I didn't been... know. I, I'm sorry, because I remember mostly what it said. I thought y'all were trying to be cheeky to him. What, but you're really what saying I, I don't remember, remember what it was, said. hey, y'all head this way, because there's some stuff. Duncan yeah. Duncan tells you, he says, oh, I do believe we have a few parents. I, I have heard word of some people. <laughs> We've got a few parents here. We, Come meet them. He, he gives you this knowing glance of like, ah, oh, yes, I believe I know who sent that letter. We've... They've been expecting you. Excellent. But we weren't expecting, or I don't imagine they were expecting this yellow man. Your name, sir. Reaches out his hand to Misiko. Misiko says, I know. <laughs> Misiko says, oh, My name is Misiko. I live in uh, the Be- Medine's Beard, <coughs> south of here, of course. I'm sure you know. Uh, not that I live there, but you know where it is. And I'm just trying to journey home to my home. I tried to do some selling of my wares, and things went very poorly, and these nice gentlemen are bringing me home. He says, Duncan says to you all, do you, do you vouch for the trustworthiness of this man? Ought I to let him into the city with you? Can I roll insight on what he just said, Misko? Sure. Um, He's already said most of that to you before. He's already said most of that to me before, yes, but he also said the thing about his wife and child before. This is a true thing. 16? Uh, seems, you know, seems legit. Seems legit legit to you. He doesn't give you any ticks or anything to just <laughs> throwing cheeks at me. <laughs> stop it. He doesn't give any reason to believe he's not telling the truth. I'll, I'll say we've we've traveled with this fella for for some time, and um, he he hadn't uh, he hadn't really given us much cause to to not trust him. So I vouch mm-hmm. for him as well. Okay. Hey. Uh, he says, "Very well. I'll allow him to join you into the city. Uh, we've got some people. I ought to head 
after you get warmed up, maybe I'll buy you some coats or some something to keep you warm. It's definitely it's biting cold here in Buckland. I, I'm going to uh, get two of them. Very well, small one. But what you ought to do after that is head straight to Full Hammer Mine. Uh, we've got some people up there. I believe that's who sent the letter for you. Interesting. Thank you for your assistance. And he, uh... Is, is there any, anything we, we should check out around town? Any, any Such as ruins? There are some... The ruins of Axnamore are here in town, but they're sealed tight. Uh, they, they require a special key to open, and I don't believe anyone has it. Uh, but I, th- I think you ought to first certainly go to Full Hammer Mine to get debriefed, so to speak. And as he says debriefed, he, like, he, um, crosses his arms... And when he crosses his arms, what, his two tat or his two forearm tattoos kind of come together to form what is obviously when you put them together the servants of the scale symbol. And he's kind of like discreetly showing you that. I guess you can he's just maybe... discreetly like smiling and like <laughs> raising his eyebrows and winking. No. Just there's so much winking. But he does. He he shows you that, and he's you know wants you to see that implied finger guns. Okay, but it is a pleasure to meet you. I'll be up at the mine soon, actually, uh, at the manor there to, to come and, you know, visit with you some more, but I've got some things to attend to here. Um, Do you have shops in town? Yeah, Absolutely. He's, 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 we've traveled a long way. I, I think we need to get rid of some of these stuff. I mean, it's, it's, been, a lo- it's been awful heavy carrying some of this. Like. Absolutely. Uh, there are some shops in town. Feel free to spend some time there before you head up to, uh, head up to the mine, Full Hammer Mine. Like I said, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a south, at the south of the city. But of course, uh, you know, South is up in D and D for what we're doing now. Hey, <laughs> the way you're looking at it. But yeah, heading to the cities, find your way around the the. You know, you won't miss the shops on your way in, but please do head to the mine. Uh, I'm sure Albert and Corinne are expecting you, and they'd love to debrief you and have a conversation with you before you uh, get too deep into anything else. Excellent. Thank you. And if you ever need anything, you come see me. Remember, my name's Duncan. <laughs> He shakes all of your hands again. He says, uh, Misiko as well. First, who is this bird man? Who are you? Sorry, manager. Burb says, <laughs> name Burb. I'm friend. Burb, Burb has been a trusted friend of ours for a very long time. Isn't that right, Burb? Uh, yep. Been, yep. Come on, friend, a long time. <laughs> uh, Duncan reached down and speaks to him. He says, well... These men seem to have traveled a great deal, and they seem to be rather trustworthy based on the information I have, so a friend of theirs will be a friend of mine. Uh, welcome to the city, Burb. Hopefully you get warmed up. Are you cold at all? And Burb says, never seen snow. Very cold. <laughs> and he kind of like brushes himself off and says, well, we'll get you something to warm up a little bit. Uh, but like I said, you head inside, and uh, I'll be seeing you later. I'm going to... I'm already heading here. Goodbye, Duncan. Thank you. I'm going to head to the shops. Okay, cool. Also to the bathroom. Ha. Yeah, Grim <laughs> head to the bathroom. Grim just whips it out and pees right there in the snow. <laughs> it spills yeah. Grim yeah. in blood. <laughs> All right, so um, Duncan walks over to one of those robes and he reaches into the, the, the folds of it and he pulls out what looks like one of the tablets that those the orc mages ate to become the creatures that they were and you can see him put one in his pocket. Hey. Uh, and then... There's another set of robes over at the gate. And They're the, moist. The gate, um, you can hear people say, Come on inside! We'll open the gate for you! Can I check the pockets of the four regular orc dudes? You can. Not a lot in there. Some rations, you know, some things to eat, like little cakes and stuff. Um, and you probably find maybe 20 gold between them. Okay. Check I'm the looking for daggers. Oh, if you're looking for daggers, then... You happen to check their boots. So, yeah, you check their boots and you do find two daggers all right, between cool. them. They didn't all have them, but, but two of them did have one. One guy had two daggers. Same boot. <laughs> can I check the watery mage pocket? You can. You find another tablet. Cool. That way. It stinks. Not, it's not I'll atrocious. I'll wrap it up in something. I'll yeah, put it's, that away. It, it, sorry, it's not an atrocious. It's just like, it's something that you... That when you it passed by, there was a bit of a, a, a stinky aroma to it. Didn't sound, smell like it t- would taste good. So you guys head into the city. The door, the gate is cracked. Uh, as they open the gate, it kind of pushes. It kind of pushes that cart aside a little bit that was thrown at the gate. Um, and you guys walk inside. Cool. These people seem like they would mind if that cart happened to be commandeered. 
It's, it was destroyed. <laughs> huh? There was another cart, I guess. You can come and do that one. Is it like a horse-drawn cart, or is it just a cart cart? It was, it was horse drawn. Here. I'm gonna actually say in the battle, the horse that it fle it fled because we didn't deal with it, it being <laughs> it, it, we didn't deal with it being on the battlefield at all. So there is no working cart. Dang. There is the bodies of two horses that were attached. The one that he threw that I didn't mention <laughs> that he was probably throwing. All right, Grim, working wake him up. <laughs> working cart as in cart with a source of power, source of power being a horse, or working cart as in you've deleted one cart from existence? No. So there were one two cart carts. Was one, yeah, one cart was destroyed. One cart was destroyed. But is there an intact cart there just with no horse? Yes. No. What? That's what I'm asking. What I was so trying to say, well, alright, so there were two horse-drawn carts that I kind of forgot existed for a little bit. Okay. The first one was thrown at the gate. Well, imagine right. there is horse viscera and a destroyed <laughs> cart at the gate. I can and then the so other cart, the other horses got spooked. And they ran away with the other car still attached. Okay. There's no car here now. Gotcha. That's, that's what's up. Gotcha. Sorry. Going to the shops. But there's a okay. horse puddle. There's a horse puddle. All right, what kind of shops are you guys looking for? I can for? bring them back. Hey. As you walk through the town, here we I see got, a familiar get a little dwarf man. description for you. So Buckler is a city of buildings made of thick logs and stone. The city looks hard and stern. It's battered by harsh winters. Uh, the winters that blow up from the south and the snowstorms that come up from the south. Um, of the continent, as well as they get a lot of hard sea weather from the north. Um, it's just a cold, coastal, very hard town. Um, there's a fly. Uh, and it's the farthest city from the capital, so there's, there's an Orc military stronghold that is being constructed east of the city, way, way east, it's, which is where you can assume that these Orcs came from. You can't see it, but that's, you know that to be true. We'll say Duncan told you that a moment ago. Um, and so we got there... Cool. So you guys are inside, and like this, like I said, the city. Um, you caught the fly. Yep. Nice. <laughs> um, He's still alive. No, his abdomen has exploded. I felt it. I felt it explode in my hand. The city is not quite as lively as this. This is the the biggest city you've been in since Lonesome. Um, the city is not quite as lively as Lonesome was. Um, it's evident that Buckland is in that harsher climate. It's and it has kind of a lower population. Um, also, people here seem to be a lot rougher. There's a lot more shaggy beards. There's not a whole lot of uh, Im uh, importance put on appearance here. There's not a lot of like decadently dressed people walking around. It's mostly utilitarian, like neutral colors and just whatever keeps us warm, whatever keeps us going. There's a lot of work being done. There's people carrying things all over town. Um, there's you know not a lot of play that like in Lonesome you saw like kids running around and stuff there's not a lot of that going on everybody seems to, be, to have a job and they're doing it here um it was, I've never been one for the big city but I think these are my kind of people alright why I don't know just don't seem quite like the one we one we came from uh, where we was at the academy you know it just seems like everything uh, makes a bit more sense here <clears throat> okay fair enough these people are Roughing it a bit more than most city folk would. No, no, they got it made. They got it made. They got walls and stuff. As you look around as well, um, you, the, it seems like less populated, like I said, but uh, a lot of the buildings seem to, some of them are boarded up. Like some of the upper windows are a little bit boarded up. It's not like the city is dilapidated or, or anything, but it seems like there are some vacant buildings around that have been boarded up, uh, either for the winter or because they're completely vacant. Um, it's not too many, but you, that's definitely something you notice as you walk around. But it's not to say that this is like a dystopian area. Like there's plenty of chimneys with smoke coming out of them. There's plenty of fires you can see through windows. There's plenty of torches lit um, and stuff like that as the snow continues to fall on the city. So, Ta -da! you or guys kind of arrive at the, the market area. There are plenty of houses and stuff with signs out front for different shops and things. What are you looking for? Looking to offload my scales first. Same here. Okay. Um, what you count? Maybe looking for like a general store or something like that. Sure. So work. Okay. Um, I sure. Mean, I, don't, so I don't know what the scales are generally be used for. So, like, I don't know if you can make armor from the scales or anything. So yeah, just general store. Okay. So you kind of you look at um you see general a thing. sign with a big with a wagon wheel on it, uh, and it's it's hanging out in front of a. Uh, a building with a stone awning and it says um, Low, Low Beach Treasures. Hey, I go there. And General Goods. 
<laughs> I'm gonna follow them there. Okay. But I also, after this, I would like to go to like a craftsman of some sort, possibly mm-hmm. like an enchanter. You you cool. you do pass as well a building on the way to Lobie's, uh What did I say? Treasures and, and general goods. Um, you on the way there, you pass another building very similarly. Most of these areas look kind of the same. They're in stone buildings that are either one or two stories. And they kind of have that stone awning, like the the bottom of the building maybe like this one depth and the top of it's a little bit longer pushing giving you that stone awning or whatever um and so you know hanging these signs you see another sign that's got a it's got kind of like a cauldron but also a sword on there it looks like it could be some sort of like blacksmith uh item dealer or whatever like a weapons crafting kind of area situation there and that building also seems to have a forge kind of around around back um, as well as you see a couple tailors and things of that nature. But we're heading inside to Lobie's Treasures and uh, uh, General Goods. So you walk inside. Uh, around, yeah, ching. You walk in there. There are plenty of barrels in this room. They're uh, set up along the walls or his different wares. Um, you, pretty much your general like travel supplies, uh, you know, rope, tools, um, some vegetables, some groceries, things like that. A, a very general store. Ten foot pole. You walk in. There is a rather spindly looking. It's uh, just a whole section that says adventuring supplies, but it, all it is is fifty foot lengths of rope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a spindly looking uh, elven elven lady, who um, she looks older, has seen a long life, and she says, "Ooh, well, good afternoon. My name is Luby." I'm Grim. How do you do? Welcome. Can I get you anything? We, um, we've got yeah. basilisk scales. Boom! Basilisk scales? A couple of them. Do you buy those, or do you know someone who would buy those? Oh, I haven't seen basilisk scales in... Oh, it's probably been three and a half years since somebody brought, it, brought in basilisk scales for me to see. Very impressive. Ooh. No, I'll take them. I'll absolutely buy them off your hands, but you boys look very cold. Can I get you some tea or, or something warm to drink while we sit? Yes, we'll take some of that. Well, yeah, we'll take two She's, of that. She says, "Oh, well, unload your goods on the counter, and I'll I'll get you some something to drink real quick. Um, I'll go co- I'll go back inside." Yeah, I'll do that. Yes. I'll need a bigger counter. So she walks into the back. And Probably, then, yeah. How many skills did you get? I have eleven. Eleven. I got five. Not a bad haul. <clears throat> Not a bad haul. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put four of my skills up there. I'm gonna keep one. Okay. Cool. Um, Jack, do you have anything? You have your eyes, don't you? I wanted to do other stuff with those. Right. Of That's why I'm looking for the craftsman yep. first. So he, so she walks back. She comes back around with, um, with five cups, Misiko and, and Berber in tow. We're gonna assume that Misiko and Berber kind of like chatting amongst themselves just to keep me from having to deal with you know five people having a conversation with this lady. They don't have anything to sell. They're just kind of chilling. They're looking around the store while you guys do this. Um, speaking of. All right, um, <clears throat> she comes back, and she gives you all something to drink. Misiko and Burb take their <sighs> sip, and Burb says, mm. And she says, so best of the scales, huh? Are we talking about scales or spines? Because I think we're, y'all have spines. spines yeah. These right. do look like spines. I'd take a sip. How much will you pay for them? Oh, okay. how many do we have here? Eleven and fifteen scales. Or spines. My, my, my. Oh, uh. I, I will only sell ten of mine, actually. You'd like to keep one, then? Yes, please. Very well. No, please. You, you said it's been how long since you've seen some of these? It's been about three and a half years since I've seen or sold any. So quite, quite, uh, quite scarce, I'd imagine. They are rather scarce. She's kind of doing the math and calculating in her head. I'm trying to make sure that so I have. Key. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make sure and do uh, make sure that I have enough to actually buy these from you. I think a fair price would be. What do you think? 120 gold per spine. Per spine. How large are these spines? Are they like this big? Yeah, they're like picture a shark fin. Ooh. They're big, pretty big shark fin. Well, I mean, it's been a while since you've seen any of these. I mean. Could Are you I, trying to haggle? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm wondering, can I roll? Can I roll yes. a persuasion? Yeah. Okay. As you say that, she says, I, I don't know. I'll, you roll. I'll give him help. In what way? In that he has advantage. 
but I need I need an RP. I can't just <laughs> do you like so you're back cross in the your arms like, oh, or are we trying to no, intimidate I, or trying to convince? I take a take persuade. a sip of persuade. Yeah, because he's persuading. So right. I'm not in, in. That'd be a separate check. It doesn't matter. I take it <laughs> with advantage. One was a crit fail. One was a five. Gosh. Can <clears throat> I, I, I'll just roll instead. Then I'll I'll roll. In place of you. That'll work. Wait. <laughs> no, I mean, his rolls still stand, but I'm also going to roll. All right, so we're going to deal with that roll real quick while you, if you want to try again, you may. She says, I don't know, 100, what did I say, 120? 120. 120 sounds like a pretty good price. I mean, I'm not certain how quickly I'll be able to offload these onto someone else. And there's a lot of them here. That's fine. I'm actually going to keep two of them. I just thought of something I'd like to try. Um, okay. Okay. 120 for each sounds wonderful to me. Wow, okay. Easy dealing, boys. Mm. That'll work. That'll work. So. I always try to butter them up with some warm drinks before I start haggling. Yeah, that's no, I'm just good. kidding. What, what, what'd you put in there? Oh, nothing. I just did that out of the kindness of my heart. Well, thank you. There's heart you're in there? You're very welcome. No, there's not. There's not heart in there. I have hearts if you're looking for hearts. No, no, no. We're good. I would, yeah. I'd like to roll perception just to take a peek around the shop, see if anything catches my eye. Sure. Um... 17. Yeah, so what's interesting about this area, Grim, you li- I mean, you all have lived on this continent, so you can make a decision. Have any of you been to Buckland before? We need to make that decision. It doesn't seem I like have Arlo not, has. because in my story, like, I had never been on a boat. Right, cool. Like a big boat. Jack, have you traveled this, this, this far? Would you have ever been to the Round Isle? We discussed that possibly, like, before we moved to Fark, that it was like my parents and I may have come from over there. Okay. Just like a larger city. Sure. But that's when you were a the, child? Yeah, I wouldn't okay. remember you probably much. probably wouldn't remember. Would it make sense? Like, do they trade in lumber? Yeah, sure. Okay, then yeah, it it'd probably makes sense. Okay, so Grim, you are not particularly surprised, but, I mean, you didn't spend a whole lot of time wandering. You probably did some trading here, but not, maybe Just not wandering. Mostly business, yeah. Yeah, not wandering <laughs> in the wilderness out, out there. There's a lot of, like little knickknacks and like the equivalent of like a bunny's foot you know like those kind of little trinkets like superstitious artifacts yeah i wouldn't say a ton of superstitious artifacts but like you know things like that that are crafted out of creatures that you don't recognize there's like a lot of odd little odds and ends from that look like they are this looks like a store that is um a squallet that a is squirrel wallet <laughs> yeah that is supplied uh by you know people who hunt Completed and who yes. bring and sell and things for this lady to sell uh but they look a lot it, it like seems like this area is populated with creatures that are a little bit odd like you um you would maybe expect to see like a, a rabbit's foot or something but instead it's like a a claw of a creature that you just never seen before it seems like this there's a lot of exotic animals that live here um that but none of them look particularly i would say interesting to you it's just you notice that we're kind of in a different place this landscape is different than where i come from but you know there's things to eat and snacks and different other kind of things if you need to it would be helpful if you're looking for a supply or something i'll tell you she has it with my passive perception do i notice all these little, like rabbit's foot type things I mean, yeah, if you look around the store, it's not hard to see. All right. <laughs> then I want to speak with her. Okay. Um, Loby. Loby. Miss Loby. Yes, lo- yes, sir. I have also some basilisk parts. I have two Ooh. eyes of the basilisk. I would like to have them made into an item if possible. What kind of item would you like to have them made into? Do you think? Well, the basilisk had the ability to paralyze its Yes, you certainly must be careful with those eyes. I hope you have them covered. I do. They're in a bag. A sack, if you will. (laughs) I was hoping to have them (laughs) placed in something where I could use it as the basilisk once used them. Ah, so you would would want some some sort of weapon, you think? Or or some sort of other device? Yes. I, I could see this as like a Doctor Strange, like the medallion thing, where it just like opens up. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. Well, there are two people I can think of in town. Well, one currently in town. I don't believe, I don't believe the other is is here now. But 
I know Charles Charles down down the way here. He has the the store with the the sword and the cauldron. Uh, Charles of Boonshire is what we call him. Uh, so but he's he, not Charles down the way. No, he's not. He is special. He is he is very sp- he specializes in importing weapons. But I've heard that he's enchanted and made a few before. Um, depending upon what you want, he may be able to take care of you. But there's also uh, a man who lives in town. Um, I forget his name. Very mysterious man, but. I know he uh, he comes to town rather infrequently, but he spends most of his time in Medine's beard, hunting and gathering items and things. And I don't believe he's here now, but he has been known to, to, to really bring in some, some strange things, and he's learned a thing or two about how to create items as well, I believe, in his time in the wilderness. So uh, you can speak to Charles if you like, or uh, if you want to wait for... Most people just call him the Huntsman in Buckland. Not many people get to know this man. I've, I certainly don't know much about him. I hear tell of him. But you could speak to him as well if you ever meet him. Is his name Oak? No. By chance. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know his name. I will see what Charles has to say about it. If I think he can manage, then I will go with him. But okay. if you happen to see the huntsman before I do, send him my way if you don't mind. Grim, you think he's related to the, the withered Ronald Branch that we met a while back? The thought crossed my mind. But we'll leave it there, right. where it lay. Now, are we splitting this gold three ways? No, I didn't. I didn't help gather the spines. Okay. Um, man, that was your quick, endeavor. Quick, quick. Nor did yeah, I. Got a quick question. Sure, sure, Take absolutely. time to now, save them from the sinking you, ship. You wouldn't happen to be or know of a purveyor of fine literature? Books. You're you know the word about? purveyor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about books. I know the word. I just don't know how to write it. You want to sell books? Yeah, I got a couple of them. You don't want to keep them for yourself? No, I'm not so much a reader myself. You don't want to become one? Yeah, that might be pretty good, but... Most of the people in this world get... I mean, if you can read, you can get by a lot better than most of us. I can read, but not so great. But I know the more books most people have, the better off they are. Well, you don't look to have many books on you. Well, I, I got a couple of them. I'll have to go get them, of course. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll certainly buy them from you, and I, if you if you like, I can buy them. Um, we don't have exactly a bookstore in town, as you can see, because they're kind of a hot commodity. Uh, uh, um, can I? I, I just want to like turn around and I'll, I'll like, like fish through my hat where she can't see what I'm mm-hmm. doing, and I'll I'll pull out uh, just five random books, and I'll just. Okay. I'll set them down. What, what what do you think about these these right here? These just, well, I just happen to have these on me. She flips through and says, "Oh, they seem to be kind of general knowledge. A lot of sailing, and we are a coastal town, so those might fetch a good price. Um, and you want to sell these? Yeah, I'm kind of thinking about it. Okay, I'll give you thirty gold pieces for each. Thirty pieces, say? Mm-hmm. Oh, you say it's pretty valuable knowledge. It is, and it's." But I've still got to sell them, and there's not a lot of people in Buckland who can read very well. We're a, we're a hands to the earth kind of town. You, you're right about that. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll take thirty pieces for them. Okay. She, I might have some more. I'll come back later on. She says, "Now I've got to be honest. If you have anything else to sell, I can't help you today. You've almost drained me of my cash." No, I, I am content with what I've sold you. Thank you. Okay. She slides those books across the table and sets them down behind her counter. I leave. Good okay. Bye. Good day. Nice to meet it's you. It's a pleasure to meet you. I hope you enjoyed your tea, and thank you for these scales. I hope Ooh, to wait. sell them back at a good price. Yes? Uh, I would like to give you some more money back. Uh, do you have any health potions for sale here? Of course. Of course I have health potions. We live... Buckland is a harsh climate. You might need a health potion just after waking up and having a, a piece of hail fall on your head. <laughs> Everybody who carries a potion around here. Excellent. Um, how many would you like? I'd like two, please. Two? Okay. That would be t- uh, 20 gold pieces apiece. Like I said, it is dangerous here, and you know we only get them when they sh- when they're shipped in. I don't know how to make these things. Excellent. Uh, I'll take just the one then. Okay. I'll tell you what, instead of paying me for them books, how about you uh, pay us in uh, in health you, potions? You'd like to just trade then? Yeah, let's just trade. Okay. Trade so oh, it seemed like we we we've, we've defunded you earlier. Seven hundred. Yeah, seven. You know what? It would be seven. I'll go ahead and give you eight. Hey, how about that? That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Give you a deal. Half on the last. All right, so he she like picks up um, 
like a wooden thing, a, w- a wooden boxes, kind of like the, with pigeonholes, and each of them has a health potion in it. Cool. And she like takes eight of them out and sets them on the counter and pulls it back and puts it underneath her counter and hands them, puts them on the counter for you. Um, I'll Here you are. The two and get the rest of these guys. Excellent. So I'll get Trace a piece. Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Arlo. It's a very, it's a pleasure doing business with you, Arlo. I hope you have a, a splendid, a splendid day here in Buckland. Uh, the weather is hard to, for it to be splendid, but we we make our best and we we have a good time here as well. So stay warm and I, you ought to really go see uh, Lady Lupa down the street to, to get some to get some some better threads for yourself, because you go you all will freeze out there and just that. Yeah, I, I, I completely uh, I completely agree with you on that one. It's a bit on the chilly side out there. Is it about always like this around here? Not always, but we are approaching winter time. Oh, um, we so are it's com- going to get a bit colder. It is going to get a bit colder. We're coming out of the fall, and we're approaching winter time, and the blizzards will come in the next month or so, and it'll be a hard winter as it is uh, every winter here. What's the strength of these potions? Um, they're pretty strong. They're they're a strong brew. Okay. Um, what does a normal health potion do? I think it's like two d two, two d two d two, two d four plus, plus two. But then there's like forty four, and then there's like I think eight d four maybe. They're, they're, these are we're gonna call these four d four healing potions. Cool. I'm uh, also leaving for the. Uh, Crafter dude. Okay, cool. 44? Yeah. So that would be a potion of greater healing. A potion? These would be potions of greater healing. Of greater healing. Showa. I like it. 44 plus anything? Two. No, it's 44 44 plus plus four. four. Yeah. Mm. So you could get a total of 20 HP back. Yeah. That's enough to... Take the edge off. Oh <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Uh, Lo B. Will. Well, I'll see if I can't find some more in books. Maybe we can do some more trading later on. Yes, of course. You're very welcome, and it's a pleasure to have you here in our city. Now, like I say, please stay warm. The the mayor said he'd help us out with that. We helped him with the problem as we were coming into the city. Yes. Hopefully, he will do that soon. It's rather chilly out. Yes, of course. I say we go do that. I, was, I wasn't informing you, I was telling the lady. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yes, well, hopefully so. Duncan is, Duncan is, is quite the mayor, and he is, he is rather loud and rambunctious, but he is doing right by us here in the city. He's not letting those, those blasted council members and their blasted orcs take any more of us. I heard of there, he was going to the gate moments ago to try to stop a culling. Did, did you come in and see anything happen? Was there anything going on out there? Oh, just a bit of altercation come in town. I mean, it, it's all right now, though. He, he turned the army away? Yeah, yeah. They, I don't think they'll be bothering y'all. He did his best. That is exceptional. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That's he, great. He did a fine job. Fine that job. is great. I imagine it will bring pain to us, you know, worthy pain for us, you know, growing pains for our city. But... We are tired of being under the boot heel of the council. But anyway, I'm not going to talk here off. You've got to go see other people. We'll see you later. Little old lady. Bring the pain. <laughs> yeah, I should have I should have gone a little bit older lady voice, but she's an elf, so. So the door shuts behind you. And you go Into to, the cold. <laughs> yeah, into the cold. The wind is picking up a little bit and the snow is blowing around. Where next? I'm going to head to this Charles fellow. All right. You open the door to his shop. It's set up very similarly to uh, to uh, Lobie's shop, but um, instead there's not a lot of stuff in front of you. It's mostly a very small space where you would stand at a counter. Behind the counter are weapons hanging up, weapons of most types. And um, there's a Grim in there. And there's a Grim in there as well. So you all enter in, and Misiko and, and Burb are kind of still following you around, kind of, you know, just looking around, not really dealing a whole lot. Kind of burbing around. Yep, and so you walk in, and then there's a man, a uh, kind of burly man. He's got a big, like, long, long beard. Um, he is bald on the top of his head, and he's got a very well-groomed mustache that curls. Uh, and he's got some spectacles on his nose. Um, and he walks in, he is propped up in a chair, like with his feet up on a stool, and he is reading, um, he's actually reading a little, a little book. And he sets his book aside, and he says, well, hello and welcome to Charles of Boonshire's little shop. 
I'm your, I'm your host. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Charles of Boomshire. Welcome. Good day, Charles. What can I do for you, men? Good, good make do you sure. make weapons? I do make some weapons. I also have a new shipment of uh, magically infused weapons, because here in, there's something about our wilderness that we're more and more magical creatures around, and you guys look like you're from out of town. So I don't want you to be going out and doing any adventuring or anything unprepared, so I have some magical weapons for you that seem to do some damage against the magical creatures of our world. Now, I would like now, to what, see those. What, what kind of creatures are you talking about out here? Straight? Uh, I mean, the, the Round Isle has always been famous for our, you know, exceptional, large, and scary wildlife, but here in the, the last several months and years, the activity has increased, and there have been magical creatures, and creatures that seem to be from some sort of beyond uh, that we've never seen before roaming the Round Isle. We've come to deal with it, but you, you need augments a lot of times to deal with that. But most of these weapons here are my new shipment. They are... Uh, infused with a little bit of magical power, so they'll be able to harm those those fiends and fae you might be able to, you might come across in your adventures. Uh huh. Do you he also says fae, or I was like, mm. <laughs> okay. Do you also enchant things? I am a I'd call myself a journeyman enchanter. I'm not the best there is, but I've been known to enchant a few things in my day. Anything too terribly specific, but if you want something to hurt a little worse or hurt a little different, I might be able to handle that for you. Hmm. Okay. What so, weapons do you have? Um, he has all kind of good stuff. Uh, most most wep normal weapons he has, um, he explains to you that he has um, that are offer like a plus one or a plus two to attack, depending upon what kind of weapon it is. Like it'll add um, a plus one to your attack roll and a plus one to your um, damage or whatever. So nothing too special, just something something that will hurt magic things. But he has those are most of what he has in the back or behind him. I pull out the uh, spines. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could make something unique from these? Oh, those look like basilisk spines. Am I correct? Yes. What? You know, I'm not even going to ask where you got those. I'll, you guys seem to be very capable men. That's all I'll say. Um, but I might be able to do something with these, something, you know, to slow some, slow some enemies down, or, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to do some thinking. I'm not sure exactly what I can do, but I can do something for I you. I have an idea. Okay, what? A form of gloves. Gloves? With spikes coming out of the knuckles. Ah, you're a bit of a brawler then, I see. Indeed. Okay, and what effect would you like these to have on your victims? If you could enchant them, preferably something that could negate some sort of magic resistance, but also to increase lethality, if possible. I'll see what I can do. Come back and give me give me two days, and come back and I'll I'll have those try to have those prepared for you. And he reaches out for the the spines. I hand them to him. Okay. <laughs> what color are the spines? They're like like a black bluish, with a little bit of like magical green at the bottom where the they're kind of decaying a little bit at this point. Nice. And leaking. Um, he says, <laughs> now there will be, of course, a, a, a price, uh, but I can't really tell you how much it'll cost until I'm finished, depending upon how much work it takes, if you understand. I understand. <clears throat> Any, anyone else? Does anyone else have anything they'd like f for me to get get started on them, or just a magical dagger or a magical sword, maybe? Uh, Jack, I think he's looking for... Yeah, for so I was. I have, as I've said before, two of the the woman next door. I have some more basilisk parts that I'd like to see if something could be made of. More parts? Yes. And I'm going to take out the bag. This is two basilisk eyes. You have eye... Oh, wow. Uh, that was a very smart a smart pull from that creature. That's, a, that's where most of their power lies, is in the eyes. So what on earth would you want me to do with these? I'm looking for something that can utilize the eyes just as the basilisk did. You'd like to be able to paralyze? Exactly. Petrify, excuse me, that's the wrong word. Paralyze is, they turn things to stone. That's what they should do. So would you like me to the, to affix them to some sort of blade? Or uh, less, more of a... Less of a weapon, more of a defensive measure. Perhaps a medallion or something that can just be held up in front of me. Okay. 
Okay. Paralyzed. Nothing large. Paralyzed. I need to be able to remo- move quickly if possible. No shields or I'm anything. Thinking, uh, something like that would have to be <coughs> would have to be powered in some way because the, the eyes would eventually run out of their own magical energy. I'd have to try to fill out some feel some way to you know pump them in. I, I think I could do something for could you. Could you transfer power from another magic item? Possibly. Just to power it. I'm thinking about you using it actually. Once you, de- if you deplete a charge, how will this recharge? I, w- I will feel, I will feel this out, and, and if you will give me the eyes, I'll again give me about two, two days, and I will work something up for you. Um, I'm thinking of uh, maybe a, um, a gauntlet or something of some sort that you can show to your foes that would maybe uh, allow it to be used. Um, would you do? Would you do with something like that, or would you prefer an amulet or a necklace of something? Uh, a gauntlet would work, but okay. something that I can keep closed if I want, like possibly on the palm. Of course, I can feel. I can. Yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll. I'll see what I can do. And one other thing, I have this dagger that I am not particularly uh, attached to. If you can use it to help you make this new enchantment, or if you think. You can just take it to knock some off the price, then that would be helpful. Certainly. And I'm going to pass him the dagger of drinking. The he grabs it and looks at it. Says, uh, this, this ought to do nicely. This I'll, I'll definitely, if nothing else, I'll use it to knock down the price on, on your wares. Absolutely. Excellent. And one more thing. I need this enchanted, and I'm going to put my cleaver on the okay. table. Ooh. With what? Uh, how, how would you like... Like I said, I'm, I'm not an expert. I can't do anything too crazy, but uh, just, what would you like? Just make it imbued with magic, I suppose, just so it does damage to creatures that normally would be resistant to it. I can absolutely do that. Make it more accepting of magics. Of course. I learned a lot in Boonshire. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever that may be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yonder piece. You can't get there from here. Absolutely. So, like I said, if you were to come back in about two days, I should have all this figured out for you. Um, gauntlets, uh, eye thing, and, of course, enchant this blade. Well, that's all well and good you for about two man? days. Yeah. If you got anything in stock. Uh, any of these weapons behind me, they'll, they'll, they'll do something, some damage to the Fays and Fiends, like I mentioned. Um, but I don't have anything exceptional in stock, like I say. We've, these, these are really a shipment of a large, of a, uh, we, bought, we bought in bulk, knowing what's coming, you know, from outside the walls. And <clears throat> the, the Orc army is always giving us trouble, and we feel that situation coming to a head as well. So we wanted to have people armed and ready to fight with uh, whatever might come. I got you. Um, well, yeah, I, I got one, I got one one of them spines as well. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he might just be able to make something for for a friend. Okay, what do you what do you need? Uh, Bird, Bird, come on up here. Come on. <laughs> Bird comes up there. Bird, Bird, what what kind what what kind of a weapon do you think would would be good for you? Because you done mm. we done lost lost the last one. We got to have something better for you. Not like that sword. Sword made too much noise. Hmm. Something quiet. Mm. Birdwatch, small blonde man with axes. Axe be pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, fella, you think you can make something uh, kind of imbued with this scale of properties? So he wants an axe? Yeah, I sound like it. It'd have to be a small one. Well, I mean, he's a rather small fella. All right, I'll get you a small axe, little bird man. Absolutely, I'll, ha- I'll handle that for you. Yeah. Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't suppose you got a loner for the next two days while we can, uh, while we can get that constructed. Now, I'm sorry, I can't deal in loners. I can't loan you anything, but you can certainly buy. It. That's cool. Yeah. Probably show me a picture or something. Mm. You can certainly buy one though, and if you can bring it back, and I'll buy it back from you. All right, let's do it. Okay. Uh, what would you? What would you? What would? What? What do you want, little bird man? And he says, "I said axe." So he takes like a what looks like a hatchet off of the a, a kind of a battle hatchet, not quite as big as the Duncan's that you saw earlier, but kind of a, the Skyrim looking with the curved blade on it. And he gives cool. it to to Burb and he says, "That'll be thirty-five gold." Uh, and Burb, you know, takes out of his his little pouch and he puts his gold on the counter. And he says, "Burb got money," <laughs> and he <laughs> takes his axe and you know affixes it to his. We'll put it on, he puts it on his back. 
Uh, and then you're good. Everybody's good. He says, all right, is there anything else I can do for you? I believe that's it for me. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, boys. Um, welcome to Buckland. You don't look like you're from in town, like I said. So welcome to Buckland. Hope you have a good time here. Thank you. Hmm. There may not be a lot of traditional fun to be had, but <clears throat> if you like adventure, there's no better place in Medine. Did the mayor tell us there was a place to stay around here, like an inn? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I was in the bathroom. He told you you need to head it up to the... The mine. The mine manor thing. Okay. Um, what when kind of day is it? When everybody's about to head out. Um, getting towards the evening. Okay. When everybody's about to head out, I want to I wanna kind of talk to him in private real quick. Okay. Hey, um, I, I found this little thing out, out, out there, in, you know, outside of town. I wonder if you might be able to use it to, to work on any of these items you're working on for us. I don't know what that is. Well... If you see if you can find some use for it, maybe one of these items could uh, could be better served with it. All right. Uh, there's only one of them. I don't know what I'll how to necessarily test it and use it, but I'll see what I can do. All right. See what, see what you can come up with with that. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, it smells bad, and I don't want it in my pocket, but it did something powerful, I think. So. What What did it do? Uh, something elemental. I don't know. It, 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 you, you'll figure it out. All right. He takes it from you and you know, puts it in his little pouch to work on later. All right, everyone. It's been it's been a pleasure. I'll get to work on your stuff right now. And he heads. He takes all the supplies you gave him and heads to the back. Hey. And with that, we are going to end today's episode. Dun, it's been dun, a long dun, one. Dun. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for enjoying. Hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're on YouTube, if you're on iTunes or any other thing, leave us a review or give us five stars or whatever you want to do if we, hit, if we earned it. Um, but we hope you're enjoying the show. Please, you can contact us via Twitter at Tank Media Games. And remember, more than anything, that we love you very much. Bye. Toodles. Later.